An interesting and, and a very important aspect of vibration work is the fact that vibrations create harmonics. So any sound, for instance, a guitar string. If you strike a guitar string, uh, it will sound its fundamental pitch, and it will also sound harmonics and partials. Um, these are important. People don't take those, these partials into consideration. But when you're doing a very carefully and very precisely set up experiment using vibration, those uh, ignored harmonics and partials can totally mess up what you're trying to do because they influence uh, vibratorily whatever it is you're doing. And it might be a very minor influence. Uh, for instance, how important it is. Uh, Keeley used tuning forks in, in a lot of his work, and he said that the best tuning fork that you could buy on the market was only in tune by one fortieth. And I believe what he meant by that was the partials and harmonics of that tuning fork were not tuned. They just went for the bass tone, like 256 or whatever it was, and they ignored all of the harmonics and partials. Now, a very good piano tuner will take into account those partials and harmonics. Because if he doesn't, the instrument as a whole is going to, it's not going to sound the way you really want it to sound. So those who understand the, the, the fundamental tone of the string and that they have these harmonics and partials, they are important to take into consideration to the degree that you figure they're going to play into your experimental work. In uh, piano tuning, it's like the second, third harmonic that the guy takes into consideration. In Keeley's work, he looked at all 40 of them, and there's probably a whole lot more, well, there are a whole lot more, but 40 was enough for him for what he was doing. And the way these partials and harmonics work is any tone that you sound, let's say two cycles per second, which is real low pitch, they will naturally break into their strongest harmonics, which are a power of two, so two, four, eight, 16, etc. And it'll go on up until the sound power diminishes just because you can't hear the sound doesn't mean it's not there. What happens also is additive and subtractive synthesis. These frequencies will add to each other and they will subtract from each other. And it's from this naturally occurring overtone series that we derive our music scale. And it derives it through this additive and subtractive process. So if we sound two and four, they will add together and create six, and it will automatically divide, so you wind up with three. So if this was C and this was C1, then this would be G in the middle. And likewise, three plus five, you get eight. Three plus four, you get seven. And they start filling in these notes. I don't have that chart here to present to you. It's on my wiki, where it shows how these numbers break out. One note will fill an entire chart of a music scale. 